was going to say good evening, and I thought, no, I'll say good day. That's just funny. Well, I'd like to welcome everybody back. Okay, have a pleasant afternoon is what I can. If you didn't, well, I'm um, sorry. But I'll good afternoon. Anyway, we're back in the Lord's house this evening and um, here to um, sing some Christmas carols. And Brother Saul has taken that. And then uh, passed away a message for us this evening. So uh, we'll just open with a word of prayer and um, start. So, Lord and Heavenly Father, we just thank you for another opportunity to meet and, uh, Lord, for the, the day that you've given us. And uh, Lord, we just ask now you'd uh, bless this time and we'd uh, just give thanks. And it's in your son's precious name we do so. Amen. Welcome to church this evening. The first song we'll be seeing is I Have Heard the Bells on Christmas Day. We will sing the uh, first, the second, and the fourth, and the fifth.
should have the whole rest of the passage memorized. Now, Philippians chapter 3, we're going to be verses 7 to verse 21. And then we'll go from there. So if you can look at the screen, or you can quote it from memory. How many can quote it from memory yet? So let's, whoa, hello. There we go. All right. So uh, usually when I do that, everyone tells me I had an American moment. Getting to turn the car phone off. All right. Um, but what do you say when Australians have an American moment? Huh? That's fine. It's all good. We'll figure it out in the end. Philippians chapter 3, verses 7 to verse 21. So I'll say it, you say it, and then we'll just kind of go through it all. Um, and, and we'll go from there. Now, Philippians chapter 3, verse 7 to verse 21. But what things were gained to me, those I come to loss for Christ, yea, a doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but done, that I may win Christ. And being found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend, that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us mind the same thing. Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which so, well, so as you have us for an example. For as many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now I tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile bodies, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, According to the working whereby he was able even to subdue all things unto himself. What? Right. Last song we sing before the message today is Oh Little Town of Bethlehem. If you all stand with me for this one, we will sing in the first, the third, and the fourth verses.
Take your Bibles this evening, 1 Samuel chapter 2. 1 Samuel chapter 2. I know we've been uh, going over the life of Samuel in our children's Bible story time, uh, but there's a verse that as I was studying it, and there seems to be over the last several weeks, I've had conversations with a number of people, and um, this topic keeps coming up. And how we as, as Bible-believing churches tend to deal with it has, has kept coming up. And so what I'd like to do is just try to encourage you in this area and, and just kind of look at something. And uh, it's going to sound, the title of the message, if it's, if it's there, it's going to sound a bit interesting, but let me get through it and you'll understand what I mean. And tonight we're going to look at a topic that we're going to entitle Strength for Stumbling. Strength for for stumbling. Now, is it a good thing to stumble when you walk? Physically? No. You, you can tend to get hurt when you stumble. Uh, I don't know if about you, but I have the innate ability to stumble well going upstairs, not just down, um, and, and do all those types of things. And usually it results in hurting yourself. But you know what? Spiritually, as a church, and as individual believers in the body of Christ, we need strength for stumbling as well. As a church, as, as part of a family of God, we need strength so when others stumble, we can help them. Do you understand the whole point of if you say, oh yes, but someone has sinned. I understand that. Do you understand you can still be kind to them? You can still be helpful to them? You can still be there with a hand to help them up? Not one to push them back down? Not, not like a foot to kick them while they're down, but just to be there and say, hey, you know what? I'm sorry you went through that. I'm sorry you did that, but hey, let, let's get, get up and let's keep going for God. That's what we need in our churches today, but yet, what do we find often? We find the opposite. We don't find strength for some, we find, oh, I can't, I can't believe if you ever struggle. And if you think and you can't believe someone else ever struggled in their Christian wall, I got one word for you. Pharisee. Because if you're telling me you've never struggled in your Christian wall, uh, you just did. You lied. All right? We all have. And that's part of being part of a family. Have you, have you ever realized not everyone in the family always does things that's wrong? I mean, you know my, my family and, and um, recently... My brother's gone through a few things. And I've said to him, I said, you know one thing, one thing you can always count on. And he said, what's that? I said, I love you, and I'm always here for you. I said, what's your number? I, you can call me anytime. We can text anytime. I'm always here. And he goes, yeah, but if I call you and tell you what I did now, you're not going to like it. I said, I didn't say I'd like it. I just said I'd be here for you no matter what, and, and that I'd always love you. And he goes, yeah, but if you found out, and I said, no, 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 you have to understand something. You're my brother. I love you. I may not like you at times. And he goes, you're sounding like your mom. And I'm, yeah, I'm probably sounding like my mom. And this. But we need that amongst Christians, don't we? So take your Bible, turn to 1 Samuel chapter 2. Let's read the first eight verses. Now draw your attention to one verse in particular. It says, and, and Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoiced in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the Lord. My mouth is enlarged over mine enemies, because I rejoice in thy salvation. There is none holy as the Lord, for there is none beside thee. Neither is there any rock like our God. Talk no more, so exceedingly proud. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by Him actions are weighed. By the way, this is Hannah's song in response to being told she would have a baby and expecting the song of Thanksgiving. The bows of the, the bows of the mighty men are broken, and they that stumbled are girded with strength. They that were full have hired up themselves for bread, and they that were hungry ceased. So that the barren hath borne seven, and she that hath many children is waxed feeble. 
The Lord killeth and maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. The Lord maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth low and lifteth up. He raiseth up the poor out of the dust and lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and he hath set the world upon them. You see verse 4? It said, The bows of the mighty men are broken, and they that stumbled are girded with strength. Father, we come before you this evening, and Lord, as we look at this topic, Lord, may you help us. May you help us to learn. May you help us to apply your word, Lord. May our church be one that is known as a place that we love people. And the Lord, we may not agree with everyone's actions, but Lord, we will come alongside and help people have a new beginning and, and get up and follow you and walk with one foot in front of the other. And, and Lord, just live the Christian life to the best of our ability. Lord, most importantly, may we, may we be a place that shows forth your love, shows forth your acceptance, shows forth your grace, your mercy, and your truth. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. If you think about the life of Hannah, again, this song is a song of thanksgiving. You notice she said, he, She who is barren now hath seven children. And that's a big change, isn't it? Like, the Lord changed her life uh, drastically. And we, we see here what she's talking about. She said, And, the, and the, those that, and that, they that stumbled are girded with strength. What do you need if you're stumbling? You need some strength to get up, to keep going, to press on. Can I tell you something? If you haven't figured it out already, life is long, most of the time, and a hard obstacle course. Have you noticed that? Just when you, if you, notice, just when you think, oh, wow, and things are just getting better, what's going to happen? Another obstacle is going to come in the way, correct? Another difficulty is going to come. Another uh, challenge in life. Another something. And you think, well, uh, there's been a couple of times where we've gone, oh, wow, we're going pretty good. And what do we start doing? Looking out for obstacles. Because they're coming. You say, why? That's just life. We often trip. We often stumble. We often fall. And it takes a lot of strength to get up, to keep going, and to finish and press toward the mark. It takes a lot of strength to get up and keep pursuing. To keep going. You know what? You will soon realize you cannot make it in life on your own. You need help. Hey, that's why God says, I can give you strength. That's why we can do all things through Christ, which what? Strengthen it. Me. That's why God's put you in a church family so that way we can come alongside of each other, we can help each other, or we can encourage each other. So as we look at that verse, let me just show you a few things uh, of how God will give you strength when you stumble. Notice I didn't say if you stumble. I said when you stumble. You understand, every one of us at some point in our life, if we're going to sin. Is that, is that a fair statement? Is that, that, that's not shocking to anyone? We're going to stumble. We're going to, you know, sin in some way, shape, or form. Now, you may think, well, you know, my sin's not as big as so-and-so's sin. Well, guess what? Sin is sin. It doesn't matter. And we still need that strength. First thing you need to realize for strength for stumbling is this. The Lord never promised you that you would not stumble or fall. Some people think this idea, hey, when I get saved and I accept Christ as my Savior and the Lord is my strength and, and, and I'm filled with the Spirit and I'm walking after the Spirit. Do you understand? Nowhere in Scripture does God ever promise a Christian that they will never stumble and they will never fall. Matter of fact, when a lot of times when the Lord spoke, He said, you know what? Hey, Peter, when, you, when you're restored, strengthen your brother. You know, feed the sheep. Hey, but when you, when you, when all this happens and you get restored, go on. Take your Bible and look at Proverbs chapter 24. Proverbs chapter 24. 
Should be a familiar verse. Verse 16. It says, for a just man, a just man. You understand just, justified. Man, what? Falleth seven times. Hey, we're not talking about a sinner. We're not talking about an unsaved person, are we? We're talking about a just man. Falleth seven times, and what? Riseth up again. But the wicked falleth into mischief. Hey, don't be surprised if you stumble in life. It's very good. A just man falleth seven times. But what does he do? He riseth up again. Don't be surprised when you stumble. Rather, be surprised if, when you don't stumble. Hey, be surprised when life is going well. That, that's a good thing. But you know what? When you're, when you're running a race, you know what I've learned? Uh, from playing basketball in high school, I learned when you're running, you kind of need to watch where you're going. Have you noticed that in life? When you're walking, you probably kind of need to walk, watch where you're going, don't you? And hey, why? Because well, I can remember one time we're all doing laps in, in basketball, and one of the guys wasn't watching where he was going. And everyone running the after them could see exactly what was about to take place. Because he was out in the lead, he was in front of everyone. And have you ever seen someone when they're out in the lead, when you're running laps, and they kind of turn around and start mocking everyone behind them and how slow they are? We all saw it. He didn't see it. Because he was looking back over his shoulder, and he was running straight into a rubbish bin with his lid off. We probably should have been kind and warned them. But when someone's mocking you of how slow you are, you kind of tend to not say anything. And next thing you know, we're running along, he hits the bin right at the waist, flips over and goes head first into the bin. And you see feet. And I would like to say we all stopped and helped him out. But we didn't. We all kept running and said, I thought you were faster than us. And just kept going. What happened? He wasn't looking for obstacles. And so if you're running and you, the Christian life would be, hey, this is going good, I can I tell you something? Keep an eye out. Because the Bible never promises you that you will not stumble. Look at John chapter 16. John chapter 16, we'll look at verse 33. These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. We talked about that this morning. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. You understand, Jesus said, hey, if you're in the world, you will have tribulation. You will have difficulties. Another way we could put that is, you will stumble. You will stumble and fall many times in life. That is just a fact of life. You don't believe me? Think of the life of David. David is a man after God's own heart. Did David stumble a few times? But every time he stumbled and he was confronted with the word of God, word from God, what did he do? A just man fell seven times and he rose back up again, repented, got his relationship right with God, and kept going. And you know what? He had people in his life that would help him up and that would strengthen him and that would keep going. Think about the life of Peter. Can you imagine being Peter and, and Jesus is teaching? He says, well, I'll never forsake you. Jesus says, hey, Peter, before the cock crows once, you're going to deny me three times. Oh, no, I won't. Did Peter stumble and fall? Big time. But eventually he got back up again. And he was the one preaching at Pentecost when 3,000 people got saved, baptized, and entered the church in one day. Can God use someone even after they stumble? 100%. He can. 
how might you stumble? Well, you can stumble because of sin. You can stumble because of doubt. Maybe a health problem might cause you to stumble and, and, and have a little bit of a problem. Maybe family struggles. Maybe a financial difficulty. Maybe you're just disappointed. Has anyone ever disappointed you in your life? Sometimes when you get really disappointed by someone, you can really, it can cause you to stumble and be, you know, not, not quite walk the Christian life like you should. Maybe you fail. Maybe, maybe you're backslidden. Maybe you're, you're away from God and, and you're not as on fire as you once were. You're not serving Him like you once were. Second thing we see is this. The Lord does promise strength for those that stumble. He does not promise that you won't stumble, but He does promise strength for those who do. We saw that in, in one single, but take your Bible also, look with me at Luke, at, at Isaiah, sorry, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28. Has thou not known, has thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. But there is no searching of his understanding. He hath given power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young man shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. You know what I've noticed the closer we get to the end of the year? There's a lot of weary people. A lot of people are just getting, say why? It, it gets to be that crazy time of year where there's a lot of things going, uh, you know, I, I've just noticed that. And what happens when people get weary? They get sick and they get run down and they get, and some people get grumpy and some people just, whatever it might be. But you know what? God says, when that happens, hey, I can give you strength. You can mount up with wings and you can run and not be made. I can strengthen you. I can provide strength to those who stumble. I can be the one who can, can help you and, and recharge you and, and re-energize you. We've also got Psalm chapter 73. Psalm chapter 73. Look at verse 26. My flesh and my heart faileth, but the Lord is my strength. But, but, the, but, no, but, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. You see, this psalm is a psalm of Asaph. And what he's saying is, you know what? Even when my flesh and my heart fail. He's, that's, failing is another way of stumbling, isn't it? He said, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Even when my heart fails, God's strength. The difference between the Christian and the world is not that the Christian never stumbles. Rather, the difference is that the Christian has someone to help him up when he does. You are not on your own when you stumble and fall. You have a comfort. One who runs to your side and helps you to get back up. And by the way, you should also have a church family who does that as well. Aren't we told to encourage one another? To strengthen one another? Last thing I want to look at this evening. Yes, uh, the Lord doesn't promise you won't stumble. Yes, the Lord promises the strength of those who stumble. But here's the last fact that you need to realize about strength for those who stumble is this. When you stumble, the choice is yours. We give up or we get up. What's going to happen? He's going to say, oh, you know what? I'm tired of this. I'm just going to give up. You know, there's a lot of people giving up lately. A lot of people. Shocking the number of people just saying, I'm done. 
giving up or you get up. He either you stay down and you blame God or you blame Christians or you blame church or you blame, 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 blame or you get up and you keep going by the grace of God. King David, after that incident with, with Bathsheba, what happened? Oh, he could have blamed God, couldn't he? Well, you know, you put me in that position. You had me anointed king. Technically, yes, but really, no, David, that was your choice. Where you were, what you saw, what you did, what you saw. But you know what? When he was confronted, he didn't give up. He got up in the strength of God and said, you know what? You're, God, you are right. I am wrong. I repent. Please restore me the joy of my salvation. Let me continue on for you. And you know what God did? God said, I can use that. People today are experts at making excuses. Uh, you'd be surprised excuses people use. Probably not. You have children, right? Everybody seems to be a victim. And no one wants to be responsible. Hey, and when life gets hard, they simply just give up and stop crying. When marriage gets tough, what do they do? They give up. When work gets tough, they quit. Then they complain, well, I can't find a job. You quit enough jobs, no one's going to hire you. When school or university gets tough, they give up. They drop out, they stop. When the Christian life gets tough, they give up and become a bitter person at God. When finances get tough, they give up and they just stop and they just blame everyone else. When raising children gets tough, they give up and let the kids or teenagers do whatever they want. Hey, anyone who thought raising children was easy was probably dumb. No problem, no problem about it. Hey, when witnessing gets tough, they stop doing it. Can I say something? Don't be like the world. Don't be like this type of bitter Christian. Hey, when you stumble, ask God to give you strength. He's, he's promised to give you strength. Strength for the stumbling. And then get back up and keep putting one foot in front of the other. And while you're getting back up, look around. There might be other Christians around you who may need a helping hand getting up. And they may not need it. Well, I can't believe you stumble over that. Hey, but for the grace of God, there goes you too. And be there to encourage one another. Be there to strengthen one another. Hey, the church should be a place where if you're struggling and you're stumbling, you should be able to come to a brother in Christ or a sister in Christ and say, Hey, can you pray with me about it? And we should be able to strengthen one another. We should not then be able to go. We should not, we should not be the devil. All too often, if someone people are afraid to come to us to, to help them, you say, why? Because we're too good at doing the devil's job. You understand the devil is the accuser of the brethren. You shouldn't be. The devil does a good enough job at his job. He doesn't need your help. He doesn't need my help, does he? Well, what we need to be is encouragers and and helpers and, and strengtheners. You see, the Lord never promised you that you would not fall. The Lord does provide strength for those that stumble. Remember, when you stumble, the choice is yours. Will you give up? Will you get up? You know what we need? People think, well, Pastor, you're going to say we need people who don't stumble. No, no, no. We just need people who just keep getting up. And keep doing what they can do. And, and, and keep following God. And keep walking with God. And keep being encouragers. And just keep putting one foot in front of the other. And just keep going. The just man falls seven times. And rises up again. How can we do that? Because all throughout the scripture. God says you know what? You're weary. I'll let you mount up on wings as eagles. Hey you stumble. I'll give strength to stumble. Allow the Lord to strengthen you, to encourage you. Hey, as we go through these last few weeks of the year, don't give up. Keep going. The Lord will strengthen you. He'll give you the ability to put one foot in front of the other and just keep going and say, why? Because we are in a lifelong pursuit. 
and a lifelong marathon of pursuing God. And we don't need this to quit now. Hey, we're closer to the Lord's coming than we've ever been before. Let's be faithful and follow faithful and just keep going and keep encouraging those around us to keep going and be the place where people can truly have a new beginning because we're willing to say, you know what? And by the way, when someone is church disciplined, what's the, what's the goal of that? Restoration. Restoration. Of, of bringing someone in and saying, hey, you know what? Let's restore you back in. Let's help you get back in and work with God. Why? Because God gives strength to stumble. Father, we come before you this evening. Lord, I pray that we can be encouraged as many of us are weary. And Lord, I know things are going on in life and it can be discouraging. Lord, may we realize and use your strength when we do stumble. Lord, most importantly, may we as believers show the same grace that you and forgiveness and encouragement that you show to us, to other believers. Lord, may we not do the devil's job. Lord, may we not be the accuser of the brother. May we be the encourager of the brother. May we be the ones there with a helping hand. Lord, may we help people along the way and encourage them in their walk with God. Lord, as we think of this, Lord, may we be encouraged in you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. The last song we'll sing for the night is Thou Didst Leave Thy Throne. We will sing the first and the last verse of this one tonight. i